Hello, welcome to another of our sessions of digital slide review. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, pathologist at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences, and I'm glad to have you with me today for this program. Our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture between PATH Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association, uh, of which I'm a member and uh, very grateful for that membership. So our case today comes from the realm of GYN pathology. Uh, it's a 65-year-old woman who's had some postmenopausal uterine bleeding uh, that has brought her to the attention of her gynecologist. And as naturally might be the case with postmenopausal bleeding, that leads very quickly to a uh, biopsy or curatage. Uh, and this is the material that uh, was obtained. As you can see, uh, it's not normal endometrium. It's quite uh, cellular, uh, variable in color, and you can sense there's a lot of hemorrhage here and perhaps some necrosis uh, in areas as well. Uh, as we come into higher magnification, we don't see any defining glandular architecture. Uh, we see areas of uh, sort of a uh, vascularized network. You can see some of the vessels here in some areas. And, and as we come into higher magnification, uh, you can see that there's a degree of, of spindle-shaped uh, morphology to these cells, but they're somewhat haphazard and uh, uh, associated with this stranding or fascicular pattern in some areas, uh, as well as this abundant interstitial hemorrhage. Uh, we can also see that there's a great degree of uh, nuclear pleomorphism, uh, and we see some mitotic activity uh, in this situation as well. Uh, so this is uh, certainly concerning for a uh, uh, mesenchymal neoplasm, a spindle cell proliferation that's probably uh, related to uh, a sarcoma, uh, and it doesn't have the appearance of our usual low-grade uh, type of sarcomas. Uh, we'll look a little bit further at some of these areas and we'll appreciate that there's a, a degree of sort of mixoid change in a few areas like some of these here. You can see some intervening loose, slightly mixoid tissue uh, in this uh, area. Uh, and again, we get uh, nuclear enlargement and uh, hyperchromasia, uh, a lot of apoptosis in some of these cells with sort of single cell necrosis, um, as you can see here. In addition to these mixoid areas, uh, we see areas of uh, necrosis or hemorrhage, as you see here, uh, with uh, more dropout of the cells uh, and less uh, viable remaining tissue. So where do we go with this type of a differential diagnosis? What do we do with this? How would we evaluate this uh, more fully? Well, uh, I think uh, stepping back, I think uh, we wanna think about what are the spindle cell lesions that we can see in a curatized specimen in this setting. Of course, uh, smooth muscle tumors are perhaps the most frequently encountered ones. Uh, this does not have the appearance of lyomyoma, but lyomyosarcoma might be in the differential consideration. Uh, likewise, uh, endometrial stromal sarcomas are relatively uh, more common. <clears throat> uh, but this does not look like a low-grade endometrial stromal sarcoma. So if it's an endometrial stromal sarcoma, it would be a high-grade stromal sarcoma. <clears throat> and within that category, there are several possibilities. Now, we know that uh, the high-grade epithelial tumors uh, can lead to carcinosarcoma with mesenchymal transformation. Um, and uh, that can sometimes obliterate any evidence of the uh, <clears throat> epithelial component. Um, and so consideration of that is also possible, along with adenosarcoma, which, again, we don't see an epithelial component, but some of those tumors can develop a very florid stromal overgrowth and can appear uh, quite uh, sarcomatoid. Uh, and then you, you get into the much less frequently encountered tumors, the things that you have to sort of scratch your head to say, oh, could this be this, uh, pecomas, usually a little bit more epithelioid looking, not quite so spindle-shaped, but can be uh, spindle-shaped. 
uh, solitary fibrous tumors, rare, rare in the, in the uterus, GI stromal tumors, also quite uncommon in this uh, situation. Inflammatory myofibroblastic tumors can occur in the GYM tract uh, and have a very hemorrhagic uh, uh, set of uh, morphology. So these are all things that we might think of uh, in this regard. So our preliminary evaluation looked at some of the uh, uh, possibilities and we did smooth muscle markers. Uh, those were negative. Uh, we did epithelial markers. Those were negative. Uh, we did, uh, you know, HMV45 and some of the, uh, you know, uh, BCL2 or CD34 <clears throat> stains, uh, DOG1, CD117, ALK, and so forth, to, to consider some of these less common things. Uh, but essentially, we had a positive reactivity with CD10, which was fairly helpful to, to put us just towards a uh, low, uh, excuse me, a endometrial stromal sarcoma. Now, the endometrial stromal sarcoma is, as I've indicated, unlikely to be um, a, a low-grade tumor. So we're thinking more on the category of high-grade. And there are several uh, entities in this grouping now that uh, are beginning to be sorted out. These can include the uh, Yahweh nut M2 A or B fusion gene related uh, sarcomas. Uh, these sometimes will have areas of low grade uh, tumor. Um, the other possibilities will, are those which have uh, B core related uh, dysfunction, the ZC3H7B B core fusion gene or the B core internal tandem duplication. Uh, and these do not have any low grade component. Uh, and then there are those that just have not yet been subclassified or separated out uh, to this point. So if we uh, consider this differential, then there are a number of things that we might uh, look at and think about. Uh, of course, we're just dealing with a curatage sample, so it's possible that we would have missed a low-grade component. Um, and uh, so some of those other evaluations uh, might be considered. Um, histology, though, there's a, there's a challenge with these lesions, aside from the presence of low-grade lesions, and that is that, that many of these uh, b core related uh, lesions are quite similar. Um, you have infiltrated pattern, haphazard fas fascicles, and you can get this myxoid stroma um, uh, with variable amounts of vasculature um, and other kinds of uh, changes. So if we look at the ZC3H7B B core fusion process, I mean, that looks uh, uh, quite uh, a lot like uh, this sort of situation with myxoid tissue and so forth and sometimes even can raise the possibility of uh, uh, myxoid leiomyosarcoma. Um, in contrast, the internal tandem du uh, duplication of b core uh, also has a collagenous and myxoid background with numerous vessels, lymphovascular invasion, and uh, destructive invasion. So uh, this can look uh, quite similar as well uh, in this situation and really is only going to be differentiated based on uh, molecular uh, genetics uh, studies. So what do we do in this sort of a situation? Well, uh, we've mentioned the differential and several things can be useful. Uh, uh, cyclin D1 is uh, helpful in this situation. We can do immunohistochemistry for B core, which will be overexpressed in these fusion or uh, internal tandem lubrication lesions. We can rule out the uh, GI stromal tumors, uh, look for any low-grade features. Of course, CD10 helps to confirm uh, or assert that it's uh, endometrial stroma. Uh, look for other less frequent uh, sarcomas, smooth muscle, and so forth. And then the genetic testing is usually where things uh, meet the, uh, uh, the, the more firm diagnosis. The JAS F1, SUS12 are usually, those fusion genes are usually associated with low grade endometrial stromal sarcomas. Uh, and then we've mentioned the ZC3H7B B core fusion that is a high grade. Likewise, the YWHAE nut M2A uh, or B uh, fusion gene is also associated with a high grade endometrial stromal sarcoma. 
And then the V core internal tandem duplication would be uh, by default if you had V core positivity and negative uh, fusion gene with a V core partner. So that's kind of uh, what can be done. Is it always done? Well, in our situation, uh, we did most of these to get to uh, the uh, high grade endometrial stromal sarcoma. And then we did B-Core, which I'll show you here now. Uh, as you can see at low magnification, it lights up very nicely uh, through most of the tumor. Um, and uh, you can see uh, the uh, nuclear staining is present in this situation uh, that uh, confirms the positive uh, reactivity uh, with this uh, marker. So with that finding, uh, Going further, um, in terms of molecular genetics, it didn't make sense from an economic standpoint or uh, was not necessitated by any of the uh, studies open to this patient. And in fact, the patient uh, uh, refused further treatment. So our final sign-out diagnosis in this particular case is a high-grade endometrial stromal sarcoma uh, that is a B-core related uh, tumor, a B-core positive tumor, either the B-core internal tandem duplication or the uh, uh, fusion gene involving B-Core as a partner. So uh, I hope that's helpful to you as you uh, encounter high-grade uh, stromal sarcomatous lesions and other spindle cell proliferations. Uh, that's uh, the case for today. And I hope that uh, you'll uh, hit that uh, subscribe button. Uh, we are welcome you to uh, add comments and share uh, the, your thoughts uh, on this differential and the challenges you've faced in this uh, in environment. And we hope that uh, you will uh, uh, provide feedback. We are always open to new topics and uh, suggestions for things that uh, would be useful to cover in this channel. So uh, until next time, thanks so much for joining me.